Hi there, this is Rob from RK Photographic with another Lightroom or Photoshop workshop tutorial for you. Now based on some work we did on our current on our most recent residential workshop in North Yorkshire uh, with a couple of uh, photographers who were there with us, we one of the queries we got asked was about exposure blending in Photoshop to create long exposures. The reason for this being that uh, you might have a camera that doesn't have a bulb mode in it if you may only have a bridge uh, or again in the daytime uh, you might want to do long exposures and not have an extreme neutral density filter something like an ND400 or even better um, a big stopper or one of these little stoppers which reduce the amount of light coming into the image. Now all isn't lost. You can actually still do long exposure blend, long exposure images, um, but creating the effect in essence in Photoshop by actually blending the, a number of single still images with a, an acceptably short um, shutter speed um, based on your camera's parameters that you can work with. So, you know, as I say, you might have a camera that doesn't have bulb mode and you want to actually blend, take some images and blend them. One of the key things you're going to need is to uh, a fixed anchor point or position. So you're going to need a tripod to make sure that there's no movement at all between images. That's absolutely criti critical and key. You're then going to want to make sure that ideally you've either got a timer release or a remote shutter release again so you're not introducing any slight movement or jerkiness into the images as, as the images are captured by the camera. Now once you've captured your images and again you tend to want to work relatively kind of quickly and sequentially because if you actually work you know capture one at say four o'clock in the afternoon and another one at 20 past four there's going to be an awful lot of difference between those images and if you try and do blend them it's going to look a little bit you know unreal so we've got to keep this as believable and as real as possible so what we're going to do is we're going to if we think about how we'd take an image with uh, in bulb mode and with say you know a long exposure filter actually on the lens you know we might take an image that's maybe 30 that's maybe 60 that's maybe 200 seconds long so what we're trying to do is simulate that and we're capturing the movement within that time frame so our single images want to be caught within a very similar time frame again this will give us the movement that actually looks natural and real without actually looking over the top or daft so once we've identified our images, we've imported them into Lightroom. Uh, we can either do that basic editing them on them beforehand, or we can do it after uh, once we've actually blended the exposure. I'm going to do this after, and we'll do this as a whole. But you know, there's no right or wrong way. You could get the images nicely balanced if the light has changed wildly between one shot and another. But what we're going to do, select the four images we're going to use here for this example, and we right click. And we go to edit in. Now at the top, we've got edit in Photoshop CC 2014. If we, click, if we went into this option, this would load the images into Photoshop as individual images across that top bar. And this is not what we want. What we want is the images loaded into Photoshop as layers. So if we look further down this pop-up menu, here we are, open as layers in Photoshop. So we click that option. And what Photoshop goes away and does now is it brings these images together into a single layer stack. So Photoshop's going to do the work for us. And as the image has popped up, we saw a little bit there of the light moving across the water. And the good thing is what we can see is that the images, hopefully, so if we, the best way to check, if we take the opacity down, we, we should see that there's anchored and there isn't any movement between them. There we go, a little bit of movement in that last image. So if we find an image that doesn't work, what we tend to do is we'll delete that layer. So we'll take that layer out of the stack. So now we're left with three images. And if we look at the kind of solid center gravitational points for this image, the cliffs, the houses, the rocks, and the tree in the foreground, there's no movement at all. The only thing we see moving is the water here, uh, and possibly a little bit of cloud movement, although it was reasonably still 
evening. So masses of cloud movement that day. But the, the key thing we want to capture is this movement in the water. Now what we're actually looking at here is to actually create a blended image which looks reasonable. So we're going to bring this detail through. So rather than having a single file, we'll end up with a number of images at different opacities where the water thus becomes blended. And we work from the bottom of the stack. Now we don't have to remember all these numbers ourselves. If we go to verdantvista.com forward slash tute 9 hyphen 3, website up here, look. We can, there, there's actually all the calculations and the way to calculate this has actually been presented for us. But basically, the opacity we're looking for equals 100, being the percent, times, and then we're into a bracketed equation, 1 over L, i.e. the number of layers, plus 1. Or, as it is here, presented quite simply in a table showing us for up to 20 images. So what we're looking at here is we know we're working with three images. So we're going to work upwards from the bottom of the table. So we know that the bottom image in the stack wants to be at 100%. The second image in the stack wants to be at 30%. And the third at, at, at 50%, sorry. And the third at 33.33%. Now, Photoshop won't let us put the 0.33% in. It will round it up. So we're going to get 33%. But it's not to worry. So we go back to Photoshop. And it's as simple as right click on the bottom layer, blending options, blending mode is normal and opacity 100%, that's our default so we don't need to change that. So we've gone to the next layer up, layer 2, blending options after we've right clicked on the layer. We leave the blending mode at normal and we put 50 into the opacity box. Then we go to the third layer in the stack. And we know that this one wants to be 33%, so we right click on it, go to blending options, and we put 33 in there. And what we've done now is we've created the amount of opacity that we need across the image. Now, the more images you've got, the more noticeable the effect will be. But again, we still need to make sure that the key anchor points are as firm and as do not move at all, as it won't work. And just to check that it's worked, we can switch the layers off. So if we go back just to the bottom layer, which is 100%, and we layer on our 50% layer, and then we layer on our 33% layer, you can see that the water, we've started to transition detail from each of the layers above that base layer. And what we've got here is that we're starting to smooth out that movement in the water, as we would with a long exposure filter on our lens. Now we might not get exactly the same effect, but again, what this is for is to allow those who've got a camera that doesn't have a bulb mode or don't have long exposure filters to be able to create that same type of image. Or again, you might have the camera with those filters and you might have a bulb mode, but you, what you might want to do is experiment and see if through it might be a really windy day. So by capturing a number of images over a short space of time, individual images, and the more you get, the more believable it is, but we could blend our images that way. So we're creating long exposures just by two techniques, one in camera and this one out of camera. So once we're happy with this, and again we'll just flip back through to show that effect, so if we look down here in the water, we'll bring in layer 2, and we bring in layer 3, and we're starting to smooth this water out really nicely. Once we're happy with what we've done, we right click, we can flatten the image. Now we've got a couple of choices here, we can either edit it in Photoshop or we can flick it back to Lightroom to do our editing, so personal preference. As the first tutorial from the Residential Workshops showed us our Lightroom workflow, what I'm going to do now is go to File, I'm going to go to Save and we'll throw this back to Lightroom. Okay, so now we're back in Lightroom and we can see that our images have been blended as we'd expected before. This has been 445. If we could just if we want to check this, we're going to find 445. This is the 
hyphen edit dot tiff so that's the blend of the three we're going to find 445 up here so there's the original image again so if we look at the detail in the water here and the position of the waves and we come back down to our 445 edit hyphen tiff the one that the photoshop's created once we've done our blending double click and there you go there's our smoothed out water got that little wispiness of the waves crashing up here and we've actually edited the image as we want if we press the f key we can go full screen have a good simple view of this come back out again and now we can go through our standard editing process on this whole image as we would in light room normally so what we might want to do is check our black and our white points so, so again make sure we've got a nice dynamic range on here well, the thing to remember when you're doing one in black points you might be tempted to dial back a little bit on when you've got a mixed light source so here we've got kind of dropping daylight and street lights uh, street lights are very very difficult to control and if the key thing really is to control the actual natural light there's some acceptance that when we look at a street light or if we stare directly at the sun that the center of it isn't going to be containing detail even to our, the dynamic range of our eyes so here we go so we, and then we select the black point so we make sure we've got some shadows in the image we can then tweak the contrast if we wanted to and the exposure so do we want to brighten it up very slightly so I think we'll do that overall a little bit of contrast in again what we might want to do now is raise these shadows a little bit more so if we go too far it might look a little bit unreal I'll just bring it up a little bit here to bring some you can see how powerful Lightroom is in terms of its shadow but you've got to be very selective on here it could look unreal so we're going to keep it around there and we've got highlights we could lower the highlights if we wanted just to make sure that we've got a really nice dynamic range in the sky don't want to darken the image too much there we go so we're fairly happy with that at the moment we might want to add a little bit of clarity into this image again you've got to be very careful with this slider because he's working on micro contrast I'm just a little bit in to define some of these edges we might decide we want to warm the image up very slightly a little bit of vibrance tend not to alter the saturation a great deal at all and I'm going to work my way down now because it's going to be a fairly quick edit because the main workshop tutorial we presented last was showing more about Lightroom editing so I'm just going to give it a basically a quick edit just to just to show you how we work so we'll introduce some sharpening and again we'll look at the Im image as a whole as well as this targeted area and just to make sure that the sharpening is nice and sensitive for the style of image because if you see if you push it too far although perceptively to the eyes it might look great when you actually get too close as we can see on the right it gets grainy so we, uh, we're we going to get that to level we want the next key thing is that the radius we work with I tend to drop it to 0.5 I know some people work at 0.6 and this is kind of on a pixel per pixel level it just softens the edges a little bit so I'm going to bring the sharpening up about 75 76 percent maybe on this one and what we're going to do now as we do before we're going to mask out the sharpening on the sky and on the water just to create that kind of perceptively smooth look for us so we hold the alt key down and remember that everywhere the black on the image is unsharpened so we're going to make sure that we've got no sharpening apart from to the wave crests and to the sky and to the cloud edges but plenty of sharpening on the rocks and the building I'm pretty happy with that there we go that's given us a nice little bit of contrast into this image scroll down again if you're using a camera that has a lens profile we might want to apply that but uh, for the cameras that we used by the participants on the workshop the, there were no profiles loaded into Lyra from these bridge cameras um, we'll click remove chromatic aberrations which will allow Lightroom to kind of work with our edges and just make sure we're not introducing any sort of color fringing or pixel noise around the edges of anything 
pretty happy with that at the moment. And that is basically the editing on there. We might want to look at our crop. Uh, do we do we want to keep it as is? I'm going to take a little bit out at the bottom, and we could decide we want to take out the um, the lifeboat shed on the left as well. Again, personal preference, really. Let's get in your crop as you want it. We might decide then we want to check this horizon. So I'm going to get the uh, crop tool here and draw across this horizon just to make sure we've got some sense of level there. That's leveled our horizon in the distance and it's brought the image into a little bit of balance for us there. We might again want to just add a little bit of vignette just to focus the eye in onto the village and the water. Again, we've got to be quite sensitive on the vignette and just darken the corners a little bit. Not going too far. And there we go. I'm pretty happy with what we've created very quickly there. We've got some nice colour and detail up here. We could brush in to enhance this colour and detail. We could, if we wanted to make the sky look a little moodier, we could drag a grad in. But I think I'm I'm fairly happy with what we created there. Just like a little artifact in the sky, but when you when you zoom in, it's not actually there at all. Okay, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So as I say, that what this tutorial is about is not about the editing, as we've addressed that. Now it's pr primarily showing it that you can blend multiple images as a layer stack taken from exactly the same standpoint in a quick succession of time to create the same effect as long exposure photography done in camera. It's just an alternative way to create the process. Again, even if you've got the ability to go into ball mode and long exposure filters, you might have a really windy day, so you might want to use this technique. It could become in really handy if you get a little bit of movement on the camera. It's to take quite a quick succession of freeze frame shots and then blend them. And again, given that we've got the algorithm presented on the website here, we can work out what our opacity should be based on the number of layers we've got. And that's it for today, so thank you very much for watching. This has been Rob from RK Photographic. If you want to get in touch, we are learning at rkphotographic.com or visit the website www.rkphotographic.com. Thanks a lot and goodbye.